Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson, and you are watching my 100% walkthrough for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for Nintendo Wii. We've just returned to Skyview Temple for the second time to get sacred water to bring back to Farron the Water Dragon, and Fi tells us that dowsing will not work here so she doesn't know where to go, blah blah blah. It's at the end, that's all you need to know. Go through the temple. There is some slight differences this time around, in particular the fact that there are harder enemies, so we're gonna have to get through them first. Case in point, the very first enemy you see is actually a Quadrababa. Now you can't just actually just roll past this guy, or you could throw a bomb at it, and this it will gobble that up. You could stun it with the slingshot. You can also slice it using the uh, beetle, actually, and just slice it from the ceiling, and that would take care of it as well. Um, another option, too, is to use shield bashes, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can deal with this enemy, uh, but probably just running past it is the easiest thing in general. So I mentioned this previously in the walkthrough, but whenever you see cobwebs, basically all you have to do is just roll through them. It doesn't matter. If you can get away from touching the cobwebs, great, but otherwise if you do get stuck a little bit, because you rolled through it, the I think the duration of you being stuck in the cobwebs is actually based on what your distance is currently from the cobwebs. So because you roll through it, you're not stuck for very long. Up ahead, you'll see some blessed butterflies, which is to indicate the location of either a gossip stone or a goddess wall. In this case, it's a goddess wall, so whip out the heart by pressing up on the D-pad and then strum a little bit, and this will create the goddess wall there. Now, if you do this, then this will make lead appear, and otherwise, if you run past, then lead will pop up and be like, hey, come back, guy, and he'll talk to you and mention that there's treasure right here. Now, if instead you did create the goddess wall, then he'll actually talk about Gorko instead and mention that Gorko is looking for treasure as well. I don't think I've shown any goddess walls yet, but all you have to do is just perform a skyward strike and with your glowy sword you can then draw on the wall. So the shape you draw will determine what you get, and the quality of the drawing will determine uh, the value of what you get. So if you draw a rupee, then you'll get lots of rupees, and how well you draw it will determine how many rupees you get. See, in this recording, I did a really good job. I think it's because I, <laughs> I uh, my little line went way up to the top left there at the end. Um, but yeah, drawing on goddess walls is horrible. It's like... I, it feels like it's a fisheye thing. It's not like a flat surface. It's like totally, and it's got weird little ridges in it. I don't know how to explain. It just doesn't feel good. A little wooden shortcut off to the right is actually open this time, regardless of whether or not you opened it when you were here previously. So just work your way through here. There is a bunch of frokes. You can generally just avoid them though. Kill the Bokoblins, then continue on to the right. And the reason for this, by the way, is because the uh, door up ahead is locked once again. <laughs> Even though we took care of this once already, it's apparently locked once more. Alright, so Led says that he's buried the key somewhere in a soft soil location here. You can break through the vines or you can just roll through them, either way. And then continuing onwards, so now we can swim in the water. We like raised this water level earlier in the game, but now that we have the water dragon scale, we can actually still go through here. So, crawl through the hole while underwater, which is kind of weird, and then climb up the nearby vines, and there's actually a soft soil location here. So if you were really observant earlier in the game, you might have noticed that this was here. So go ahead and dig now that we have the digging mitts, and this will reveal a small key. Which actually brings up an interesting point, like I guess technically you could come here after the Earth Temple and dig that up, however we don't have the Water Dragon scale so you can't swim through the water, so I guess this really is locked until this point in the game, but yeah, interesting thought anyways. <laughs> Could've come back here and got the small key early, but yeah, you can't. Anyways, go back to the previous room and enter the door to the far north. So now there are Staldra here in the middle, which there wasn't some before last time, but um, you can defeat these guys once again by slashing all the heads at once. The easiest way to do that is to kill one head, and then they'll always stand horizontal for a second, so you can slash them horizontally then, and that's great. So up ahead, off to the left, the one notable box that you can break, you can, there's a bunch of rupees you can get here, but this one always has 20 rupees, so I like to break it just because it's easy. Um, off to the left, or straight ahead anyways, on the far north wall, there is a shortcut here that um, I always open. I'm actually not sure, this might automatically be opened when you return here, whether or not you did this previously. I think this door is just always open. So anyways, you just want to head through here. Now here's an interesting thing, is you can actually, we need to kill the Bokoblins on the opposite side. And I would recommend that you recalibrate your controller real quick if it's not, and then go ahead and use your beetle to get across. Now, if you have the quick beetle, you can actually uh, get over here pretty quickly. Unfortunately, they are shooting arrows the entire time. I do like to hide behind this mushroom so that I don't get shot at, um, so that way I'm protected. But our goal is to smack the both of the vocal blends with the bomb. This will allow them both to die. Now, as a side comment, an alternative to doing that is actually to use Skyward Strikes if you're playing in hero mode, because in hero mode, at this point in the game, you have increased range for it. So you can actually smack them with that, and that would be another alternative to taking care of those Bokoblins instead of using the bombs. 
So once again we meet up with Led, and he mentions that there's no treasure at the end of the temple, only water, which is exactly what we came for. I think it's kind of amusing. The Mogwas are kind of funny, they're always looking for treasure, but I actually am not aware of them having a stash anywhere that they talk about anyways. So maybe they had it, have it hidden so well underground that we never know. It makes me kind of wonder if each Mogma has, like, individually has a little stash, a little holes everywhere where they keep treasure. They're like trying to hide it from each other, stockpiling stuff. I sort of envision them acting sort of like squirrels, you know, <laughs> hoarding a whole bunch of nuts. It's like that, but with other things. <laughs> Alright, so back in the boss room once again, instead of fighting Girihim, this time we have three Stalfos at once. Now this is not actually that big of a deal, especially because now we have bombs. You can lay down bombs and then, like, just kind of circle around so that they stay pretty close to the explosion radius. Just try not to be too close to yourself, but as long as they get caught in the radius, they are vulnerable for several seconds, so you can attack them in the meantime. Otherwise, regardless of whether you used a bomb or not, spin attacks are the way to go. You can't even just kind of wait because they alternate which direction they're defending. Unlike Pokoblins, who are constantly trying to defend in the direction you're facing, Stalfos will actually constantly change their de defense patterns. So what you can do is, I generally like to like, watch the one on the far right, and then uh, just if it's if it's vulnerable from the right side, I do a spin attack from right to left. And then that way I will always hit at least one of the Stalfos. Anyway, as long as you don't use up all your stamina, you should be fine. But you just keep doing this for a while and you'll defeat them. But otherwise, just bombs is like the easiest way to take care of them. In a lot of Zelda games, bombs are the weakness of Stalfos. In fact, in some of the games, bombs are like the only way to defeat them, actually. So you smack them and then when they fall to a pile of bones on the ground, then you use bombs. In this one, bombs actually turn them into a pile briefly, or, or make their arms fall off anyways. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that they took the time to include that. Like, we weren't, you aren't required to use bombs, but it's almost like a, it's like a cool nod to other games, almost that they're like they're vulnerable in a different way, I guess. But yeah, I really like it in this game. It just it feels good. It's like a real engaging way of dealing with them. So one of the things that I need to do is I need to empty out this particular bottle that I have that is filled with glittering spores. So the fun thing you can do with glittering spores is you can use them on hearts to create fairies. And you have to stand pretty darn close to make it work. Um, another use for glittering spores is actually to stun enemies. I didn't think to try it on those Stalfos. That might have been an interesting alternative. But um, the nice thing about fairies, though, too, if you can't get to them, like they're in the wall like this, you can totally catch them with a debug net to put them in a bottle that way. But regardless, we don't actually want to catch one. I was just showing that just because it's kind of cool. Um, and as long as I was getting rid of my glittering spores anyways, I just figured I'd talk about it. But up ahead, we're going to need an empty bottle to collect the sacred water anyway. Also, if you did not get the goddess cube that is just behind the shrine when we were here last time, make sure you do that before we leave. Now, as usual, I mentioned when we were here last time that this is a great place to get blue bird feathers because there are several places where birds appear. There's actually four different spaces where birds in sets of two or three will appear. So there's a very high chance for you to be able to find blue birds here. So I think this is the best place in the game to get them. Uh, or just like your chances are so far increased. And if you do scare birds away, then they will reappear after just a little bit. So by just circling back and forth, you can get a bunch of bird feathers here. You need a total of five regular bird feathers and five blue bird feathers. And so what you want to do here is in the far back, if you douse over here to the far left, you'll see that there is actually where the sacred water is. Now, quick distinction about this, though, too. This pool is filled with regular water, but only this area back here near where the fairies are. This waterfall here is where the sacred water is. I don't know why this waterfall is sacred and the other ones aren't. It's a very special waterfall, guys. It looks so different than the other ones. The ones that are right next to it look completely different. They're not the same at all. Look how sacred that bottle is. Something else I didn't think to check, actually, is there's some rupees on top of one of the pillars nearby um, at the entrance of this particular room. And I collected them last time using the beetle, but I forgot to check this time. I, was, I, didn't, I didn't think to check and see if they reappear. I just thought, oh, they're already collected, so I'm actually not sure. So if somebody in the comments knows if you already collected the rupees last time, if you could let me know in the comments if they reappear. I guess that'd be kind of cheap. Like, maybe, you know, you leave the room, come back, and get another 20 rupees for free. That'd be super overpowered. So maybe that's not what they do. But then again, we left the dungeon entirely, so I don't know. But yeah, if you could let me know in the comments, that'd be cool. Now, leaving Faron, or leaving the Skyview Temple, you'll see there's actually some blessed butterflies nearby. You want to go ahead and use your harp on that to create a gossip stone and some treasure. All right, so that's all the goodies we can get here for now. Our next objective is to return to the water dragon and bring her the sacred water. However, there's two different ways you can get there. You can either warp to the bird statue, which is probably the easiest method for all of you. However, if you have created lots of shortcuts along the way, it might be faster to actually just run there, actually. Um, and you can just do so by going through Deep Woods and then back through Farron and then into Lake Floria, which is on the left side of the map. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty easy. Um, I might have shown that. I just figured that this was probably what most of you are going to have as an option instead. 
But yeah, the other option is definitely doable. It's just less likely to be um, something available for you guys because it would have required you to unlock a lot of other shortcuts along the way throughout the walkthrough. So I, I did all those things, but just in case. This is, this is like the more tried and true way to get there if you don't have all those things unlocked. Alright, so we now have access to the next dungeon, and you can just enter, which is great. However, there is a bunch of things we can now do. Like, we got a whole bunch of goddess chests from the Great Tree in particular. There was three there, and there's a couple other ones, and there's also some that we got, like, earlier in the game, but we didn't actually have the correct items to have access to those, but now we can finally get to those. So, there's actually tons of chests we can get in the sky, and there's a bunch of upgrades we can get with Gondo that are very helpful for this upcoming dungeon. So, you can skip ahead a couple videos where I enter Ancient Cistern, or you can join me for the next video where I go to the sky! and get all those upgrades. So see you guys in the next video. Let's get Yoshi doll. Whoops, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's cool, though. I I'm actually not upset about that. Huh. Okay. Just because of the experience. Oh no, the foot's gonna get in the way. Oh, just scooch over a little bit. Okay, he's close enough. It's fine. 